Let's uh, pray over the word again tonight. Trust God as we always do. Father, we just thank you for the word tonight. Thank you, Lord, for the awesome privilege we have, an opportunity to study God's holy written word together. And Lord, let us discern by the Holy Spirit what the Spirit is speaking to the church in this hour. He that has ears to hear, let us hear. Father, help us not to become dull in hearing, but by the grace of God, exercise our senses to be sharpened, to be keen. Lord, that we might be obedient to you and pleasing in your sight. We give you all the praise in Jesus' name. Can you say amen? Amen. amen. Now, uh, we're going to go to uh, the great hall of faith chapter, Hebrews chapter 11 this evening. Uh, dealing with faith that works by love. Amen. And as, you know, Brother Hagin taught us for so many years, he said, if, if my faith wasn't operating at the level that it should be or that it was previously, he said, the first place I would check up is my love wall. Amen. So like if you got a, you know, check engine light or something like that, they've got a little diagnostic tool that can tell you what where the problem is and and he said the first place I check is my is my love wall. Mind a quiet in the spirit filled church. Praise the Lord. But uh, Hebrews eleven gives the biblical definition of faith. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. The Amplified Bible says now faith is the assurance, the confirmation, the title deed of the things we hope for being the proof of things we do not see and the conviction of their reality. Faith perceiving as real fact what is not revealed to the senses. And so if you're actually walking by faith, some people, even Christians, may think you're a bit off. When, and, and Hebrews 11 does give this example, but when when. God spoke to Noah when Noah found grace in the sight of the Lord and he was constructing this huge boat, this huge ark and preaching that, it, you know, you need to come into this ark of safety because it's, it's getting ready to rain. People were saying, what, what is rain? They'd never seen it. They didn't even know what it was. But he, by faith, was, was obeying God even though the rain was not yet revealed to his physical senses. So the first three words of that definition is, now faith is. And years ago as I was, as I was studying faith, the Holy Spirit said to me, the word did not say yesterday faith was. So in other words, there, there are some times where we, you know, where God has, has come through for us, thank God that he has. We, we've built an altar there and, and we go back and revisit that and we should. But how many of you understand we can't live in the past? We can't even really live in past faith victories. Because faith is for Sunday night. Faith is for now, 2015. Thank God for the great revivals of the past. But we need, we need revival in 2015. So, so faith is now. And then also the Lord said to me, it also did not say someday faith might be. It said now faith is. Amen. Amen. So when is faith? Now. It's now. So it's also, it, it's, praise God, it's the assurance. In other words, it is the confirmation. Thank God for when the confirmation comes. I mean, you know, it's a wonderful thing when you've been praying and believing God and praying and believing God and then the confirmation comes. It, it came through. Yes. It is the title deed. In other words, through faith, God moves you into ownership. It is the title deed paid for. Oh, no man, anything but to love him. How did you get there? By faith. So if we're going to do church, if we're going to do anything for God, thank God for good intentions. Thank God for Christian people that love the Lord on their way to heaven. But if we're going to do anything substantial for the kingdom of God, it's going to come by faith. 
Praise God. Verse 2 said, For by it, speaking of faith, the elders obtained a good report. So in the church, I love a good report. I understand, you know, everything's not always positive. People have to, they say, well, Pastor, I'm just telling you the truth. I appreciate that. But, but there's the problem. Now, what's the solution? I believe in God for a good report. You know, the before and after picture. <laughs> How many of you, you understand this evening where, where we read you during the offering, Philippians chapter 4. Paul was not always Paul. He used to be Saul. <laughs> he used to be the guy that was persecuting the church. He was the he was the most now he was he was very diligent at what he was doing. He was the the one that persecuted the Christian church the most. And God used him through faith, knocked him off his high horse, and transfer transformed him into, into Paul from Saul to Paul. And that happened by faith. Any of you know any Saul's that need to become Paul's? <laughs> Don't say their name. Don't say just keep them on the prayer list, please. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were fr framed by the Word of God, so that the things which are seen are not made of things which do appear. Then comes biblical examples of faith that still speak to us today, centuries and centuries later. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. Some have argued about bringing God tithes and offerings. And they said, well, you know, tithes, that was under the law of Moses. The Bible said Abraham tithed some 400 years before the law. And here's the word of God saying that before Abraham. Right? Abel brought an offering to God. So offerings are not man's idea, they're God's idea. Praise the Lord. It's in the book of beginnings, Genesis. You can see it from the very beginning. Praise the Lord. Offerings are God's idea. And Abel brought his offering by faith, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and by it, he being dead, yet speaking. Can you imagine an offering by faith that so pleased God that long after you're gone and in heaven, it's still bearing witness of a faith offering. I mean, long after you're gone, it's still speaking. Now that was by faith. By faith, Enoch was translated. Somebody say translated. That he should not see death. Now I was studying that one, one, one time and the, and the Lord said to me, he said, he said if, if he wasn't in faith, he wouldn't have even realized that option was available. Amen. There's some things revealed to you in faith that you didn't even realize that, that God could even do. So under the old covenant, he bypassed physical death and went right on to be with the Lord. I mean, he's, he's walking the earth for 65 years. And then the Word of God records in Genesis that God begins a 300-year friendship with Enoch. You could get to know somebody in 300 years. You get to know everything about them, wouldn't you? Well, God so enjoyed His fellowship with Enoch because, listen, He missed Adam. He used to come every day in the cool of the day. That was His man. That was His son, Adam. And they used to, you know, talk and, and, and converse together and fellowship together. God created man for fellowship. That's what we're created for. That's why that Facebook is such a phenomenon. Every, everybody wants friends on there. But God created us for fellowship. We're created that way. And so Enoch was translated. I don't know about you, but that always excites me. That he should not see death and was not found because God had translated. You can imagine that missing poor person's report. He was here and he's gone. There's not a trace of him anywhere. Amen. You know, we the the last men's breakfast that we had, we got we got into talking about different things and. Uh, and this one brother was sharing, he said, he said, you know how many people believe in this, 
and this aliens thing, this UFO and flying saucer. And, and I was just going to kind of dismiss them. But then I remembered that there was a lady that was in the church, got saved, got born again, confessed Christ. And she now believes in this, this, this UFO flying saucer alien thing. And uh, so then all of a sudden I had this thought come to me. I said, I said, what if, because I always wondered this, I said, what if after the rapture of the church, that's the story that circulated. All these missing persons, you know, these, these spaceships came down, abducted them, and people believe it. You know, trying to explain the rapture to people that are not Christians. The catching away of the church. See, by faith, we're going, we're going to be raptured out of here. Praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. We're going to have a seven-year feast with the Lord. So by faith, Enoch was translated. He should not see death and was not found. God translated him. Listen to this. Before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. He was a God pleaser. Now it's, it's, always, it's very tempting, you know. I'll just admit it. And, and when you lead anything, when you're a pastor, when you're a leader, to try to be a people pleaser. What's going to keep the people happy? Well, for some of the people, it's too hot. And some of the people, it's too cold. And some of the people don't like blue carpet. And, uh, well, we'll get into that. But, but Enoch figured out, Enoch figured out, thank God he had 365 years to figure it out, that I need to become a God pleaser. First. And you know, it's amazing that as, we, as we're God pleasers, that, that the next thing you know, that, uh, that He gives us peace. The peace of God even with our enemies. The peace of God all of a sudden. The, those relationships that were tumultuous as we're pleasing to God. He, he causes even peace to be in those relationships. Praise the Lord. I said praise the Lord. Verse 6 of the Hebrews 11 says, Without faith... It's impossible to please. And Pastor Jim, why do you teach on faith so much? Why, you know, for ten and a half years you've been teaching on faith. In fact, the first year I had this feedback. There are other subjects in the Bible. Well, which is true. But you see, Ephesians 2 says that through by grace, through faith, are you saved. So you can't even get saved without faith. We get our prayers heard and answered through faith. Anything we do for the Lord is by faith. Amen. We get up out of bed, and if you're in Christ, you get up out of bed in the morning by faith. Amen. You go to sleep at night by faith. Amen. You believe in God. Your, your faith is turned on. Amen. Switch of faith. Amen. Amen. So without faith, it's impossible to please Him. For he that cometh to God must believe that He is. I don't, I don't even argue with the people that, well, I don't know if I believe it. I said, well, that's up to you, but I believe the Word of God. All 66 books of the Bible, I believe Genesis to Revelation. You must believe, number one, that He is. Number two, you must believe He's a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. So it amazes me that, you know, even in the church, some, some have said, you know, well, I'm not getting paid for this. But anything you do for God, there's a reward for it. There's a reward in this life and the life that is to come. I believe that He is. And He is. Whether people believe it or not, He is. He's the great I Am. And one day every knee shall bow. And every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And we're going to... It's not going to be... Republican or Democrat or Independent. It's just going to be kingdom of God for a thousand year reign. Wonderful. Thank God that's coming. Let's go. We'll hold our place there in Hebrews 11. And let's go to Galatians chapter 5 if you would, please. And we're just going to look at this because this is very important. This was something I was taught early in my Christian walk. And at the time did not really understand it. And I'm still growing in this understanding, but uh, uh, very important. 
Do you have Galatians 5? Yes. Well, if you don't, I think they'll put it on the screen for your viewing convenience. Galatians 5, 5, the Apostle Paul wrote the church at Galatia, and he said, we through the Spirit wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. For in Jesus Christ, neither circumcision availeth anything nor uncircumcision. So there was an argument in the church. One side was all of these Gentile believers have to be circumcised. The other side was, no, we're under grace. They don't have to go into the law of Judaism. There was, there was an argument, and I know this is hard for you to believe, in the church. Because <laughs> he's writing to the church. <laughs> So Paul has to set it straight. He said, in Christ, it's not circumcision that availeth anything or uncircumcision. In other words, some people were even not only arguing, they were bragging that they were of the circumcision and other, others were inferior believers because they were Gentiles, not of the circumcision. Amen. But what does matter? Faith. Somebody say faith. Faith. Which what? Works by, Works by love. So the faith that we read about in Hebrews 11 only works by love. If you look at the Greek, the Amplified Bible breaks that down for us. It says, for if we are in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision counts for anything. In other words, as far as right standing with God, that was what they trusted in under the old covenant. But he said under the new covenant... It's, it's faith in Jesus Christ. So, so Paul said it's, it's not this, this, this circumcision of the flesh, but only faith, four things, activated, energized, expressed, and working through love. So in other words, when, when we hear the gospel, we realize that God's not this angry God just in heaven waiting to throw lightning bolts at us. But God Himself loves us. And we learn that John 3.16, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes on Him should not what? Perish. If you love somebody, you certainly don't want them to perish. But should what? Receive eternal or everlasting life. That's God's plan. Why? Because He loves us. So, so our faith is activated because we get a revelation that my Heavenly Father loves me. That does something for you. I don't care how many critics you got. Yes. Even professional critics, when you realize, my, wait a minute, my Father loves me. Yes. All of a sudden, your faith is activated. You, you tell your son or your daughter, I love you. I love you. Oh, you know your dad loves you. Well, tell him. Yes. It grows stronger as you confess it, right? Yes. And, and it does something on the inside of them. My dad loves me. My mom loves me. Are you here today? Yes. When we find out, find out, discover that God himself loves us, our faith is what? Activated. And then it's what? Energized. So, the heart motive of doing anything for God is important also. If, it, if, we're, not, if we're not moved with, with the love of God, you're going to lose energy in what you're doing for God pretty quickly. Because challenges come. I said challenges come in life. And so if you're not operating in the love of God, you're going to lose the energy for what you're doing. Oh, hallelujah, be wonderful, hallelujah. A full gospel, word of faith, spirit-filled church, Virginia Beach, glory to God. Yes, it's a wonderful thing. But, but the only way it's going to have energy is if the love of God is present. Yes. If, you, if you're teaching the Word based on the love of God, the motivation of love. If you're preaching the Gospel based on the love of God, you want to see people saved. You want to see people healed. One of my greatest joy is to see people come to Christ. Brother Patrick baptized today. What, what good? Thank God we got this, this wonderful tank. That God's provided, but what good is it if we're not using it? So it's the love of God that compels you. It's it's energizing your faith. If if your faith starts to lose, it seems like it's losing energy. Wait a minute, my my faith used to have this tremendous 
energy to it. Where, where is it at? Check your love walk. It's also expressed. So, so faith like love has to be expressed. Amen. And it's what? Working. Somebody say it's working. I, I like to confess even when it doesn't look like it's working. Thank God the word is working. Thank God my faith is working in Jesus' name. And, and right, right, in the, right against where it looks like it's not working. Praise the Lord. You just, you just release faith out of your heart into that. You know, you can release, release words of faith and love into the atmosphere, change the atmosphere. Are you here this evening? Praise God. Let's look at uh, 1 Corinthians 13. We, we won't keep it much longer. We're, we're wrapping this up. It's a, kind of a teaching exhortation this evening. But 1 Corinthians 13, a great little chapter, is a great reminder. Now, I know it's hard for you to believe, but uh, several years ago, we, we got these magnetic uh, uh, kind of signs, and, and we, we, had a, we had a Nissan van back then, and uh, well, a different one. And so, so we put these signs on there. said, Rivers Live and Water Church, 1001 in Lakes Boulevard. Had a website, had a phone number. And my wife said, Man, you've got to watch how you drive. Because <laughs> they're going to say, that, that, There's a preacher that, over there. Because you got the big signs on the side of it. So I just had to, I just had to admit and just say, that, 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 that is just an area. It's just a button. That, you know, it's, it's, it's just like it's a temptation. I know it's hard for you to believe. To get over to the flesh. In traffic. Because not everybody's saved. Not everybody's walking in love. In traffic. So, so I had to go get this little, I had this refrigerator magnet. It was 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 8. And it, and it described the love of God. You know, if he just said walk in love, we kind of, we kind of, we, we might get away with some things. But he specifically designed, he specifically defined what it is. Because if we just had a teaching, walk in love, we say, oh, hallelujah, I am all. We'd be like, we wouldn't want to be like, we read about King Saul today that said, I did obey God. We say, I am walking in love. But, but here's the word where we can look, as the Bible said, James said, we can look into the reflection of the word on, on this side is Christ, on the other side is us. And then we see how far we've got to go. He said in verse 4, love, charity suffers long. So it's patient. It's the opposite of the flesh. The flesh is impatient. Love is kind. Just, just put your name in there. Just by faith. Say, I, praise God, I'm, I'm patient. I'm kind. I don't care if it looks like you're impatient. You're okay. You, just, you start speaking the word over yourself. Thank God this Monday morning, I, by the grace of God, I'm walking in patience and kindness. And as soon as I miss it in this area, Lord, remind me and help me. Because that's where my faith is not, is not active and energized and operable because, because I'm, I'm, I missed it in this area of walking in love. So, so to the degree our love walk is, is the degree our faith is working. And our faith needs to be working. <laughs> Faith is a shield against a lot of junk you don't want to experience. Praise God. Love, charity, envies not. So, so when somebody else gets blessed, if, if you have a heart of love, you, you don't covet what they have. You Thank God they're blessed. That's great. Uh, how come? I don't see how come they got that. I'm, I've been working for the Lord too. I've been helping so many. I'm the... I'm the older son. I get double portion. I don't <laughs> As they say, keeping it real. Okay. Love does not envy. Charity, does, charity or love doesn't bond itself. Is not puffed up. One time my father-in-law grabbed this fish and it, and it puffed up like a balloon. It had all these little spikes on it. So, so I was glad it was on the end of his hook. Because I said, I think those things are venomous. But then he let it off the hook, it deflated, went back in the water. So love doesn't puff itself up. Love does not behave itself unseemly. Is this helping somebody? 
itself in me. It does not seek her own. My ministry, mine. No, his ministry. His kingdom come. His will be done. Come on now. Thank God for our attitude adjustment for the Lord. People get a chiropractic adjustment. But we need a word adjustment. <laughs> we do. Daily. If you go if you go a week without a word adjustment, oh my goodness. You got a lot of repenting to do. It's not easily provoked. How many of you you realize some people just trying to bless their hearts are just trying to push your way? Get a react? You. Oh, oh, you're a preacher? Oh, okay, we'll see. We'll see that. So the love of God is not easily provoked. It thinks no evil. Oh, I know, I know why they didn't shake my hand. I know they, they just don't like me. They, they've, had, they've had it out for me. See, the love of God does not think evil. Right? It doesn't rejoice, rejoices not in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. The love of God always rejoices in the truth. Bears, ready? All things. And how many times we, 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 we let it come out of our, our lips. I don't know how much more of this I can, I can take, I can bear. It's just, and some people even said, my last nerve. They, they, I don't know if this, I, 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 just, I just, Lord, I, but the love of God, the love of God bears all things. There's a supernatural grace there. There is. I mean, I'm, I'm telling the truth. There's a supernatural grace for the love of God. Because you don't feel, your feet don't hit the floor and you feel like walking in love. It is by faith. Praise the Lord. It believes all things. It hopes all things. In fact, if you walk in love, a lot of people are going to think you're naive. Are they even accused of saying, don't you have a backbone? You stand up for yourself. You tell somebody. But, but you go back to the Word of God. Said, no, I need my faith working. Because that, that's flesh working. I need my faith working. If, you, if you're in the flesh, the, 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 faith, the faith's not working on issue. It, it, it endures all things. Even pastor sermons, praise the Lord. It endures all things. Love never fails. Say it out loud. Love never fails. So if there was a, if there was a business plan that failed or... or we won't get too personal, but other things that failed, somewhere in there, the love of God was missing. Love is patient. Love is kind. And, 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 those, and if we want to go to middle school, we've got to graduate elementary. If we want God to take us to the higher levels of faith, that, that's what it's going to require. Well, some people say, Pastor, how come, how come you always got these kind of messages? Well, I'm preaching to a mature church, praise God. And so the Lord's just bringing, He wants to bring us up higher. Thank God for where we're at. Thank God for where we've come from. We can't camp out there. God wants to take us up higher. Greater faith, greater operation of faith requires greater uh, level of the love walk. And, and you and you got, got put your flesh on there. <laughs> the Apostle Paul in, in closing said in 1 Corinthians 9, 27, he said, but I... Keep my body under. In other words, I keep my flesh under. I, the spirit, the true Paul, I keep my body under. Lest after I've preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. A ruin, basically ruin his testimony, if we paraphrase it. Like step out of love. His, his flesh didn't get born again. Our flesh didn't get born again. But by the love of God, we can, we can overcome that. God doesn't ask us to do anything that He doesn't give us the grace to do. Yeah. And if He, if He can, He and He, you know, He, he didn't say in John thirteen uh, a, a divine suggestion I give you that you walk in love. John thirteen thirty four. He said He said a new commandment. Kings, kings don't even take a vote. The King of the universe said I give you a commandment that you love one another. That 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 solves so many problems. In our, in our country. People getting a revelation of the love of God. And then walking in the love of God. And then forgiving each other. 
Well, I don't know what they did to me. Yeah, but you, you, do you know how much God has forgiven us for? And then he says, he says, well, when you stand praying, forgive them if you want me to forgive you. So I just make an attitude adjustment real quick. Say, okay, well, it wasn't bad as what I thought. Okay, I forgot. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Because sometimes, sometimes your flesh wants to hold on to a grudge. And then like it just like a baby nurse the grudge. And the grudge gets bigger and it gets real heavy. Everywhere you go, you've got this grudge on your shoulder. I know, I'm getting the look back like, yo, y'all are way too spiritual to know what I'm talking about. And then that, that hinders our faith life. Well, that's the message. Father, I spoke the word you gave me and inspired me to speak. I thank you for your grace. I thank you for the seed of the word of God that's gone forth, the incorruptible seed. And God, I'm believing by faith that you're people and we're all not just hearers only, but doers of the word of God. So that, Father, we may be like the wise man to build his house upon the rock. Though the winds and the storms came, that house stood. And so, Father, we thank you for the grace to be doers of this word. We thank you for fruitfulness, some 30, some 60, some 100-fold return on this message tonight. We give you all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Have a wonderful week this week. God bless you.